Welcome to Let Me Ask You a Question, episode four. I'm your host, Mike D. This is Quest. And with us today is our good friend, Amon. Amon, how you doing, Amon? I haven't seen you in a long time. It's been a while. I know, right? <laughs> you ain't uh, nice now. He's still fat. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend of mine, um, we used to all uh, train together at our little secret spot. We can't talk about it too often. The Bat Cave. <laughs> that's what we we'll call it. It's the Bat Cave. It's the Bat Cave. So we always used to have these great talks. So that's why he's on the show today. Um, today, we're going to talk about something that I think really needs to be talked about. It needs to be talked about. Yeah. Why do people work against themselves? Because they're stupid. Here? <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> we try to get down Does to the heart disagree? of it. I, I disagree somewhat. See, he disagrees. So, but they're somewhat stupid. Well, of course, some people are stupid. That's obvious. I still win. But I won't say all. Mm, yeah. Can't go with the absolutes around no, here. No, I don't say it's absolute, but... <laughs> you know, Trump supporters. <laughs> okay. That's a, that might be a different topic. Right? Well, it might fit into this. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But let's start off with some quick announcements. Just so you guys know, guess what's going to be up tonight? The Kickstarter page. Woo! Yes, yes, yes. Come and check out our Kickstarter page. We're going to have links to the Kickstarter page from our Facebook account. And I don't know. Can we all get up from the YouTube account? We can put the link. We gonna put the link. Okay, definitely gonna be on the Twitter account though. Definitely be on Twitter. All right, um, check it out. Does anybody some... even use Twitter anymore? Yeah, yeah, lots of people. I know they use Twitter, but you don't hear much about it. But we we may have an Instagram page. Yeah, that's coming. That's, that's coming. in the works. That's in the works. <laughs> All right, so let's get down to business. <sighs> so people voted against their better interests. A prime example would be during when Obama first campaigned and you had people in the South who were anti-Obama. But I find it funny that a lot of the policies he pushed fit them. Now, to give you a, pers a perspective, if you are a poor white male living in the South, chances are you're receiving some type of government assistance. Right. So for you to vote for a party that plans on cutting this government assistance, which you used to live off of, just because you disagree with, to be bluntly, the, the skin color of the opposing candidate, mm -hmm. you're stupid. <laughs> you're stupid. But why do you think that is? Because I, I believe in American society, we had this idea, even when I was growing up, that if you're black, you must vote Democrat. You, it's just a rule. I, 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 I kid you not. I was told this when I was younger, because you know when you had a little scholastic news things when you was elementary school, and it was during when Bush was running when he first ran, and we had to pick. Bush senior, or Bush junior. Can't remember which one. They both look the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> In this case, it's Bush. It's Bush junior. He's got a young. Okay. Yeah, hell. So, <laughs> it was the red and the blue one. So at the time, my favorite color was red, so I chose the red one. And I took my mom. She's like. You don't vote for that. You vote for Democrat. You always vote Democrat. And I don't understand. Oh, and I understand, I'm like, I'm six. I don't know what this shit means. They just, they just told us to pick one, and I picked the one with the favorite color. But as I got older, you know, you learn more, you do better. And I learned that it's not about the party per se. Uh huh. And I think we, we tend to focus on the party. That if you're in this demographic, you must vote for this party. And I think that's, it's a, it's a very dumb and obsolete concept. That you should look at the policies that each candidate is setting forth that suits you, but not, should only suit you, but should, but should help your fellow man around you. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. My example. My example. My, well... My example is actually current. Look at this election right here. I can't, for the life of me, understand why people want to vote for Trump. I can. I I can't. I, I really can. You can't. No. You know they they had a picture of the Trump supporters doing the Hitler salute. Yeah, 
Like seriously, you know, I've re I've actually sat back and had uh, conversations with black people who were saying, "I want to put Trump in the office because he's a great businessman." He went mm -hmm. bankrupt seven times, <laughs> maybe more. And and to my understanding, he's not even actually a billionaire. He he's worth like one one hundred twenty billion, maybe one hundred fifty billion times. So he's lied about how much he's worth, and it's not that he he himself is a great business. His name. Just not even that good in the business world, neither. But to the average person, they hear Trump. It sounds rich. It just sounds rich. <laughs> but he's promoted that, and that is part of his his shtick. Um, I I understand why people like Trump. I mean, at least initially. I mean, the more we've known about him now, it seems hard to to really follow him unless you are like racist or just xenophobic or whatever. But I could I can understand his initial catch was. He's an outsider, supposedly, even though he ran before for president mm -hmm. and failed. But anyway, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of heartbreak in the Republican Party right now, where they keep losing apparently, and they take it, you know, they take this as you know our leaders have failed, so we need someone outside of the the mainstream who can win for us. And it's it's an old tactic that's always used, and a lot of people fall for it. But and and it's funny because only in politics is it where the person who completely knows nothing about the subject is supposed to be the person that you should go for. Like, in what in what other field would you go for the person who knows absolutely nothing about what they're right. doing? That you think that's the guy we need? But we, right, <laughs> like a great example. A great example. It'd be like, okay, my house needs to be rewired, but I'm not gonna hire an electrician. Yeah, let's <laughs> do get the stripper down the street. She, yeah, she yeah. knows nothing about this. So she yeah, that, I just I have the stripper do it for me. But she look good going up the ladder, though. Exactly, <laughs> and that's what politics is about. It looks good. Uh, Oops, but um, I mean, like I said, this isn't a new phenomenon. Like you look at the history of American politics. I mean, this is always this has been going on since like George Washington, really. I mean, he he tried to play it where he wasn't part of a party, but he was a Federalist. And, you know, at the time, he tried to say, well, I'm outside of the mainstream, blah, 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 because people even then had their their different ideologies of how things should be in the, you know, in the country. And it's always been like that. And you've had politicians that have played, I'm the outsider, and you have people who, you know, whenever things went wrong, they wanted to blame the foreigners or whomever was the current scapegoat and say they're the reason to all our problems. That's nothing new. Hitler did it. Actually, everything but, Hitler has done and said, Trump has basically kind of... Regretted. But he's not... He, you know well, what? I mean, just in American politics. You know, only, I, mean, that, that, I mean, we can go on to other... No, I'm just... You know, you know, no, no, I know. But, you know, but he's not doing nothing special. You know, you yeah, know it's, it's not even like he's, like, really hiding his, his, his junk. You know what I mean? Why don't you... Why don't you just take a good look at it and listen to what he's actually saying? Because you know they don't even talk about actual American policies during the Republican debate. They just insult themselves all day long. True. Like, like what are you what are you saying? Oh, uh, uh, he sweats so much. Oh, he got more makeup than me. I'm going <laughs> to win so much. You're going to be tired of us winning. That's that's Trump. Okay, <laughs> and, and, but you know what? I get the Republican Party this. They know their audience and they know who they cater to, and it and it works all the time. I mean, don't get me wrong. Democrats play the same, do the same. Look at Hillary. Yeah, yeah. Hillary does the same yeah. shit. But even though I like to put on, Hillary is basically Republican. She just wears blue. Well, see, see the she thing. She actually started off as, as a, a, re a, a very hardcore Republican. She, 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 um, when she was in college, she was for Barry Goldwater, a Republican presidential candidate that was against the Civil Rights Act. <laughs> and now all of a sudden she's. Pro black. Mm -hmm. Bill got that I guess business. because she can do the nene that makes her. No, Bill. Black. Bill got up in that. <laughs> Bill got up in that. Oh, well, he used to. <laughs> he used to. <laughs> What's Bill got up in that? Mean, all that changed. I mean, you really just. I, I I don't understand. You can just all all people have to do. They don't even have to look that hard into their programs. It's just listen to the language which is being said. Donald. He's never talk about any politics. He's always just blaming somebody else for the problem. Well, he danced around the question like Hillary. Yeah, yeah. Hillary, oh, she's so quick to invoke 9 11. It's ridiculous. I was there for the um, helping Wall Street during 9 11. Actually, but, family got in an episode mm -hmm. where Lois actually copied everything Hillary Clinton did by invoking 9 11 on everything and everybody going for 
<laughs> right. That's Everybody was cheering. Woo! Nine eleven. I'm a woman. Woo! I don't, but you're not. You're not help. I don't think you necessarily help the problem. And I think I, I was reading an article on from the Huffington Post where they said um, Hillary is actually where the Republicans used to be, and now Bernie is 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 actually where the Democrats used to be. So they. Hillary is actually where the Republicans should be, where you're not, where she's not, I'm not saying that she's completely unreasonable, but like her, her policies don't necessarily help you get out of the, the situation. situation that you're in. They just make, it's like, if you're in a hole, right, you're in a hole, mm -hmm. and I have a rope and a ladder to get you out the hole, but instead of me giving you the rope or the ladder, I throw you some stuff down there to tell you, well, just build a ladder yourself. Even though you don't know how to build a ladder to get out the hole. Now, many people are saying, well, yeah, you, know, you know, you let them get their own initiative and blah, blah, blah. But we know American politics and American society and American history doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. it, it clearly doesn't work that way when you had years from way before the, this republic because they didn't find America. Fun fact, Native Amer American Indians were here first people. So all white people did was found a republic. So, since before this republic was created up till now, you still had systematic oppression and systematic ways to keep Protest straight Protestant white males. I had to be clear on that. Mm -hmm. Now it has changed to, you know, whatever sexual, ethnic, sexual orientation white males in power. But up till now, she hasn't really changed it. I mean, let's look, look at Bill's track record. Like... Yeah, maybe people say, well, Bill Clinton's the first black president, blah, blah, blah. No. Some people. I, 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 I don't agree. I, 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 don't agree. I, I, I don't agree, no, I, I, I don't agree I, I, with I, it. I, Let me finish. I don't agree <laughs> with it. I completely don't. I think it's the most dumbest shit I, I ever heard. But when people look at the policies he said, like mandatory minimums, the war on drugs that has crippled the black community, he signed his name on these things. The welfare reform, the, the very thing that people complain about, uh, People not working when they're on welfare. Bill made that possible. Yep. All for a black vote. No one ever t takes the, the, the time to really look. The issue what what Bill Clinton actually did, and that people might get turned off by me saying this, he just kicked the problem down a few years. Yeah. All right. Then Bush came in, added to the problem that was already kick, kicked off to him <laughs> at the time, and then we turn around and, and you you know we blame uh, Obama. Uh, <laughs> we blame all this on Obama. Yeah, everything gets blamed on Obama. Well, I think everything gets blamed on the current president, and then whatever political ideology that comes along with that president, or what party is going to be, you know, badgered as well. So, I mean, let's be honest, Bush faced a lot of that criticism as well from the left when he was in office. Mm -hmm. He was blamed for a lot of stuff that was kicked over from the Clinton administration that wasn't actually his fault, but he might have, you know, he might have uh, made it worse through his through his policies, but clearly he didn't start it. Like, he right. didn't, like, a lot of those financial problems, problems with uh, foreign policy, this was stuff that was handed to him, but he made it worse through bad decisions. But, you know, everyone blames it on him. And then, you know, the same things happened to Obama, and whoever comes in after Obama's going to catch that as well. Because people are, that's what this movie did. You know, people are short sighted, and mm -hmm. you know a lot of the stuff we talk about. It's not really a surprise to anyone who has like a background in social science because we know that people have a lot of uh, how should I put it, like hidden persuaders, like basically like cognitive and and emotional and perceptual um, factors that that keep them from critical thinking, and. When it comes to politics, political ideology is a is a great thing for people who are either stupid or lazy thinkers, because instead of making individual decisions based on reason, they can just use their ideology and form their opinions on things just by that alone. Hmm. Trump. Well, that's an example, but, but I mean, it happens. I know it happens, it happens, well, it happens both on the left and the right. No, I mean, it does. It does. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying just for the current situation but, <laughs> is. But I mean, I'm, I mean, to me. I, Getting back on to, well, if you really look, I don't think people are really paying attention. I don't think they really care at some on on some levels, because all only thing I've ever asked people to do is don't just vote based on a feeling. Look at these people's policies. But people are lazy. 
and, and but I, but it doesn't even take that long. Nowadays, you can find a YouTube video and spend two minutes on why you should vote for Bernie Sanders. Seriously, it's not that hard. We're not getting paid to campaign for him. So. I don't even know. I, to me, <laughs> to me, just saying I want to give you free college and free health care well, hey. is enough to give you the presence to see in my in, in my eye. Hey, no. hey, if the Young Turks can do it, why not? No, I'm saying it's not enough. It's not enough that he said it. He said how to do it. How he was going to do it. So, well, I mean, to, that, that's an added touch. Now, granted, to I be honest, there are some. I, I mean, I'm I'm for most of his policies, but to be honest, there are some flaws in how he's going to finance it. But that's not the the issue because right now these are just campaign promises, and it's just the fact that he, he said it. that you know he's for those things is is a plus in my book, and the fact that Hillary is latching on to those things that he's promising now because it's popular shows that they you know. Yeah, but I, I think it, maybe it needs to go further than that. I mean, it, it, so everybody gets caught up and say, oh, campaign promise, promises, campaign promises. Well, the thing about it is you need to hold people accountable for their promises. Oh, that's true. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying they campaign promises because well, no, regardless I, of the president, but, but I think they I, have to run against I, I, They I, have to put that forth to Congress for those things to come but, to fruition. But I but I also think it's, it's, it's an issue because people oftentimes want to turn around and say, well, he can't get this passed, he can't get this through Congress. But remember, people, we're the ones that give Congress the power. We're the ones who vote these people into office. So we're the ones, when somebody blocks us from getting something that, we, that the American people feel like they need to have, we're the ones that need to get that person out of the way. But and if fun, that's true. Hey, that's rough, fun fact. This November, you can, we're actually voting on new Congress members. So no more is the time for complaining about well, what's that's, not getting done. That can change this year. That that can change during the presidential election. That's actually what I wanted to bring up. The fact is, like, most Congress members keep their keep their positions. Like, it's funny. I want everyone always hates Congress except for their Congress member, and that's why those people are never removed from their seat because everyone hates Congress except for their leader. So if everyone hates everyone except for their representative, then no one's going to get put out. Exactly. And then on top of that, you have, um, what, do you, what do you call it, that they do now, um, where they set where they set their districts up so that basically... The gerrymandering. Is, is gerrymandering. Yeah, so you, then, oh, then you add goodness. in the fact of gerrymandering, and that it, make, it makes it so that these people are pretty much untouchable unless you have someone who can really stick it to them in, in their district to get them out. Yep. Other than that, most... Other than that, once you, by the time you get into Congress, you're pretty much guaranteed a long, a long career. All right, gerrymandering people for you guys are basically um, when Congress restructures the district so the vote is counted a certain way, and whoever's in charge of that state at the time, be it Republican or Democrat, they actually are the ones doing the restructuring. So it's a big, huge conflict of interest. When um when when it comes down to gerrymandering, and people need to do something about those laws. Not their interest. <laughs> well, not there, but I mean, some some gerrymandering looks so ridiculous that the designs of the districts look like something a crop circle would, would pop up as. <laughs> to reiterate the gerrymandering definition for those of you who want to be factually correct, i.e. me, i.e. It, you, is to manipulate to manipulate the boundaries of an editorial constituency so as to favor one party or class. So this is not in favor of this Democrat Republican. It depends on your tax bracket, your demographic, your ethnicity, religion. All these things play a part in this. Right. And as I remember, gerrymandering is illegal. Mm, no, no, sir. No. Not illegal. It's frowned upon. By whom? Depends on who. Where? Does it say it's illegal? It's, Look so, that up, please. it's sort of like how the mob <laughs> frowns upon like dealing drugs, but they all still do it. Yeah. Um. So... I I I think that's it's it's a big issue. I mean, laziness. I think is the is the number one issue. I I, I want to address one. Well, I think people want to oh. vote in their own. So it says political political gerrymandering is the drawing of an electoral district in lines of a manner that discriminates against the political party. When used to be ensure party success, political ger gerrymander is usually legal but can be contested. At this time, it is legal to draw district lines to protect. Incubants of both parties, so it's it's it not legal. it's legal, but it can also be contested. So the fact that y we as a people can go forth and say, "Look, I ain't with these how you drew these lines." Yeah, 
So that is enough. And it says usually legal. That means at some points it's not legal. But in most cases it is, but it's still be contested. So that's still enough to say you fucked up on these lines. We need to redraw them. Yeah, as I said, once it starts looking like a pretzel, I think it's time to start looking at that a little more um, critically. You know what? All right, let's let's look at this. Let's look at education. Everybody likes to learn. I would hope. I like to. Think. I, you would true. like to hope. I would like. I, I That's said to hope. so not true. I said I would like to hope. In my perfect world, everybody would love to learn. Well, in my, my perfect world. Well, in my perfect world, I can leave out the house, leave the door unlocked. Go to my car, leave well, we my keys in the car, rooms. go to work, we call come home, rooms. and nothing be touched, and my car be fine. But that doesn't happen. <laughs> well, we can all have dreams. You know what? I, what I've noticed, I think there's a disturbing trend, especially here in Baltimore, that it's okay to be stupid. Oh, it's America. That's it's America. Always, uh, that's America in general. The, <laughs> the co-producer, I'm sorry. I can only the speak on Baltimore. Of the movie *Idiocracy* actually said that his movie is starting to become real, and it is. It's idiocracy, what is that? So, Idiocracy was a spoof it. made by the guy who made Beavis and Butthead no. okay. and uh, Office Space, which is a cult classic for people who ever had the privilege or dis- abuse of working in an office, depending on how you look at it. But um, So, he made a movie in 2005, 2006 about an army private who was of average intelligence and average talent in every sort of way who was sent them to the future accidentally. It was part of an experiment to, uh, I guess, just prolong prolong his life or whatever. And by the way, there was also like a prostitute of similar average intelligence and talents and so forth that was brought along with him. So the, the project was shut down, but the, exp- but the little cryogenic state or whatever he was put in was still going on. Mm-hmm. So he's put um, like hundreds and hundreds of years into the future and he wakes up and everyone in the future is are complete idiots <laughs> and he ends up being the most smartest person in the world even though he has like average intelligence but that's how dumb everyone is in society that he's actually the most intelligent person in the world and he's sought after to solve all their problems i know you're talking about that's the movie where they were using gatorade to water their plants yeah. Yo, he got uh, electrolytes <laughs> <laughs> exactly i got you i got you i got you and uh, the present Hector Camacho is played by Terry Crews. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the movie is hilarious in itself, but it was scary. Like, that's where, how, we're, that's where we're going. How, from. Yeah, how <laughs> things are like that. And what made it surreal to me was I was reading the, this book. It was really controversial at the time. We, we discussed this before in training called The Bell Curve by uh, Mary and Hernstein. They were these two um, uh, psychometrists that... Um, basically did a did some studies on intelligence and race and social class and stuff mm-hmm. like that and a lot of people thought they were racist because they pretty much just brought up the facts of um what's known in intelligence research that there are different um average intelligence based on like ethnic class and such and so forth and getting aside from that because i don't want to go into that that's a whole different thing oh yeah because but, yeah <laughs> but well get but getting back to idiocracy they kind of made similar predictions to Idiocracy in the book. They were saying as time goes along that if, if you, when you see a decline in the average intelligence of, of society, that you're going to see more people like uh, more dependent on entertainment, and, which we see now. Um, people making better, worse decisions and the health, health of society deteriorate. Basically, a lot of stuff that was going on in, in Idiocracy, but Idiocracy just kind of exaggerated what they were saying but it, they kind of went along hand in hand mm-hmm. and it's like it seemed like what they were saying is actually coming true like that and the average the average iq of of our society has actually gone down a few points and so and we're seeing the repercussions of it i mean you look at the, um like the latest polls especially dealing with like america being number two in ignorance <laughs> you know that's 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 a problem for me Who's i think number they, one north korea <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I look that one up. I'm the all the all coming to America. We can't even be number one in stupidity anymore. (laughs) Number two in ignorance. I think um, math and science, the last time I looked, we were uh, 34, 35, something like that. Um, It depends on the poll, too, because they are, you know. Well, 
But yeah, we um, clearly weren't in the top five. We're, we're, I mean, yeah, we're, not, we're definitely not even in the top ten wow. when it comes down to math and science anymore. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. So, like, the, it, here we go. Two problems so far we listed why people vote against their own in, interests here is laziness, ignorance. <laughs> you know what I mean? That just seems to be... <laughs> And the fact that, thing. and basically the fact that politicians can exploit our psychology, like I said, it's not that just that some people are stupid. It's just that politicians are trained to exploit human behavior. So. But may okay, see, but that's only works if you only take things at face value. I mean, at at some point, I guess you're kind of being gullible like a kid, like to believe some of the stuff that this, these these politicians are saying. And I and and I know if you're an adult. You should be able to look beyond what somebody's just saying because you're being an adult. You're used to people lying to you. <laughs> I mean, it, it happened on the left too. I think Obama exploited that too. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, what was his motto in two thousand? Yes, we can. Yes, we can, and change we can believe in. All us, yeah. I don't think that's I necessarily. I don't think that's necessarily um, his fault there. I, I believe he. I, I, I believe. Think, I think he. I think he exploited the fact that people were looking for something different after eight years of Bush. No. But but he. he the but the really, thing is, the, well, really, really think about what happened. He. It's been plenty of laws that Obama has put up, and what they do, filibuster, filibuster. Oh no, I'm filibuster. not. Oh no, I completely agree with that. What I'm saying I mean, is, he he. <laughs> He's a political pragmatist, but he he sold himself as this idealist that was going to change the way politics is made. And, I think he I, and I don't and I think he was never like that. I think he was always a pragmatist, and he was just a good like any other politician at, at selling his brand, and his brand was change. No, but I don't think it was all his fault, and I think I you know what at the at the heart of it, I don't even blame him. Obama, I blame us. Well, I blame both. I, I, I really I really blame us because the fact of the matter is is that. We as 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 the American people saw the dysfunction in Congress, and we didn't do anything about it. We just said it's Obama's problem. Let him deal with it. But the, then the thing is, it's, it's also it's kind of hard. Yo, North Korea ranks higher than us in literacy. I'm gonna be surprised. They're yeah, you learn or, you learn or you die. But They're anyway. <laughs> But no, okay, so back to like the Obama for just one second. Mm -hmm. it, sometimes it's hard to criticize him because he gets so much unfair flack thrown at him that the genuine criticism that you can make at him is sometimes lost in the hogwash of okay. all the other stuff. My genuine criticism of him, at least from my view, mm -hmm. is is his hawkishness, like his his drone wars, like the fact that, that this kid from the Middle East came to Congress and said, I'm scared of clear blue skies because that's when the drones come and that's when his that's how his, he lost his grandmother. Wow. To the, the, and yeah. and the thing that disappointed me so much about that was that he criticized uh Clinton when they were running against each other during the two thousand seven, two thousand eight campaign saying you don't have to talk and and sound like a like a Bush Republican about foreign policy to be tough you know, to be tough on, on terrorism. But he turned around and did that exact thing. Um, I mean, he, and he got a Nobel Peace Prize for something that he didn't deserve. Like, is is I'm sorry, there's nothing in his in his presidency that showed him being peaceful. fostering pre uh, fostering peace. And that that I mean that's I that's know. one that, that's one big why, why don't we just head. look at well then, and then his the secret the secret deportation centers across America where they uh, where they've been shipping Latino immigrants out that that's been a serious problem for me um and well and then, and then and then and then similar to to like other Democrats in office he he likes to pay black people a lot of lip service but then when it comes to actual policies that that does something for them I, I've seen it I've seen little in return but this I, I, I've seen little return on investment for for black people unwaveringly support him just well, because he's the first black president well the, the the issue is too is I would the issue I really find with him is that he's tried to buddy buddy with the Republicans too much I, I don't, all black people are gonna hate you because you, you I don't you care. talked about Dale Obama I but I, I wish you on this no I mean I mean okay I just think he was buddy buddy with the Republicans too much I believe there was too much reaching across the aisle at some point and then than them biting back <laughs> every time he he need to be reached, angry black man. The, he need to be angry black man. Okay. And and especially at this point where in the in the presidency 
brother, you don't have much to lose at all. Well, well <laughs> he did a lot. I mean, he reopened the things that were cute, but he's he's actually been a lot bolder now with his statement. But no, he could have been. He, he could have been done it. He could do a lot more. A lot of lame duck presidents start to push the, the envelope a little bit because they have nothing to lose at this point. He has nothing to me, to And lose. to me, that's not political courage. Like, political courage is when you put everything, when you're on, putting the everything on the line in the beginning in your that's first true. term. That's political courage. Doing it when you're when you're out the way, when you're out the door, that is. It's a bitch move. It's not. I'm not saying it's a bitch move, but it's, I'm that's it that's is. not that's not carriage. That's it's just, a bitch move. That's you're taking the easy way out. That's that's, the, that's the, just the expedient way. Like, no, I'm saying Obama's taking the bitch way out. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that's that's his view. I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying. I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's a bitch move. I'm just saying it's not but courageous. I'm gonna ask. He, he like he spent so he spent so much of his of his of his political power. Pushing the um, healthcare thing, and which is cool, yeah, but, but there was but there was so many other things to do at that point that but, he, he had the he had the he had the power in Congress at that time to do it. No, uh, many well, people will argue that well, if Obama had done, and I had this conversation with somebody. They, they mm -hmm. argued that if Obama had would have had done more for the black community, people would have saw it as racist. Now here's the thing: mm -hmm. I disagree with them. I totally disagree with them because if, if that's the case, you're saying the whole demographic of black people are all poor. Are all, are all crackheads you know you're just putting all these negative societal things just on one demographic so I disagree with him I mean it, he I, look I was one of the first people that said I'm going to hold this man accountable I'm going to hold him accountable for what he did and when I didn't see what I wanted what you, what you need to produce yeah I want to have people I want to have my own family fuck mm -hmm. about now, 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 before people take that out of context, I'm talking about the certain things that should have been done, they did not do. Like the incident with the, um, the police brutality cases where, they're, under his administration, they were trying to push these further as federal, into federal court. Didn't happen. None of these things happened. And, and, and I feel as though, as a, as a black president and yourself who came out when Trayvon Martin's situation happened and said, that could have been my son. But when the time came for you to, to put the hammer down and say no more, we're we're taking this up a notch. But I don't think necessarily that that was his call. That, that that's something that's something that 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 has to go by the the state that you're in, and you have to talk to your congressman about. That. And I agree. And then even he can, he is allowed to come out and and and, and kind of say yeah, I'm, I I would like for you guys to do this, but until the state, the state until the state pushes that, then that, that, that's not no no that's I'm not, not blaming his it on call. him. I'm not blaming it all on him. But here's the thing: this is where we come in as a community. That's the time we should have went up there and opened our mouths. Look, um, what's his name? Elijah Cummings' office is right there by State Center Light Rail stop. It's right there. His office is right there. Okay, and how many? And, and, people and, that you think actually. and that's the problem, <laughs> and and I feel, and that's the problem. Like the incidents with the um, with the the riots, with the Freddie Gray thing. Not gonna put names out there, but I have people. All of that was on the superintendent. I don't think the police, the police commission, not had taken the fall for that. He was a scapegoat. Of course, he got paid. No, 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 no. Not even. Let, 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 let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Go ahead. Thank you. It was the superintendent's fault. Uh -huh. He should. He was more so at fault here. Now, yes, the police knew ahead of time all these things were going to occur. It's on Facebook. I got it on Facebook that this was going to go down. So I'm pretty sure the police got it. But the fact that the superintendent, instead of actions he took as far as the schools, instead of saying, no, hold them there. We're going to get buses shipped to the school to take them home. Instead, you let them out early. When the police already out there, they were out there before the school the school let out. Then you shut all the buses down. So you're not talking about just at Mondawmin? No, at Mondawmin, that whole area, they shut Mondawmin down. No right. buses can go in and out. The subway so, could not move. Uh, let me finish. Go hurry up. Shut up. <laughs> all of these situations could have been avoided. So let me stop you because the fact of the matter is it wasn't the superintendent's fault. How I about, said he's. I said he's he should not. Be, he should, he he should, should be not held be the scapegoat. Should, get accountable. No, I, the only accountable person that should have been held uh, responsible that wasn't was the mayor. No, she should. She's be she's the one that called the shot. She's the one that got on television saying I gave them room to riot. Those were her exact words. I agree. And she, uh, and, and, and 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 yet. Did not call the coast, um, the 
did not call the National Guard in at times. When the when the governor himself said, I was just waiting on the call. She was missing for hours. No, no, hit me up. See, everybody was saying, where was the mayor? Why wasn't something to do? Don't blame that on the no, superintendent. No, I'm not blaming and then, and she was the one. Wait, no, no I know. I'm said. not finished. That's not what I'm I said. I'm not finished. I said. I'll let you talk, and now I'm talking. Go ahead, sir. Ma'am. <laughs> Childish. Anyway. Uh, no, I let you talk and then I finish. And she was also the one that, that called for the for the buses to be the, for the buses to be shut down. That is not the that, that is not the school intent the, 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 the school um superintendent. The superintendent fault. I didn't say it was all his it's, fault. No, I but, said he but should the, also be held accountable. He shouldn't be held accountable. All of them should be held accountable. No, the, should the, be the held no account. leadership the, 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 the leadership should be held accountable. Which is the which is the mayor. Everybody else, it falls All underneath her. All the leadership her. should be held don't, No, don't sit up here and try to blame. I'm not blaming you nobody. Just did. I said everybody who was you in leadership did. at that time should be held accountable. Everybody. Not, I just, all I said was they shouldn't use commission as the only scapegoat. He was scapegoating. I feel as though he was scapegoating. But the, the school superintendent and the mayor, yes, they should be held accountable for their actions. They both should be held accountable. Not just the superintendent, but also the mayor. Now, Getting on back when people said, well, I'm going to get them room to riot. Now, again, I didn't, now hear me up. I didn't say I disagree with it, but I mm -hmm. also look at it from a different perspective. Hear me up. Let, let's okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. Let's say she told the police, go ahead. And let's say one of those police would have shot one of them kids or one of them kids would have got beat. It would have escalated the situation. Yes or no? No, because the fact no, the because as a no, because as as a police officer, you are trained to handle that situation. And if they would have broke up, if they would have broke up the fights before it spread like it did, uh, because it started in one little pocket and, and then the whole out. and then it branched out. And they would if they would have controlled that situation first, like you were trained to do, and then instead and, and, and instead of what they do. Um, all of a sudden they all chasing these people down Camden Yards all at once. All of a sudden, out of the blue, instead of just breaking up the pockets and breaking it up, we wouldn't have this big old riot. Agree. The businesses wouldn't have about got destroyed. No, I agree. Now, it's fit. Now going back to that, given all the recent case of police brutality, we have seen that police, even with their training, have not done it. Have not done it. Period. The first option is a black male. I'm a sheep. Now I'm not saying that's comes for that's not for all police officers because that doesn't I can't say that about all police officers. I've met some good police officers, but some, some. But that doesn't mean. But I'm not saying. That, I'm no, not no, saying no, that. But you're, you're say, saying that because finish, the possibility. Let me finish. Let me. Finish, I didn't say that should be an excuse of why she did it or not. I'm saying I'm looking at it from both perspectives. Do I do I think all that could have been avoided at Montgomery? Absolutely. There were many ways to avoid that. Let the, send them buses. There's no way in hell that only Polly and West are the only two schools in Baltimore City that they have their own MTA buses. That is bullshit. They do. Yes, Polly has a designated bus that picks them up in the morning. It's the 38. It goes to North Bend. I forgot the other street. It picks them up at designated bus stops, takes them straight to school, picks them up from the school, and drives them to these designated areas in case they need to catch another bus or can walk home. Polly and West should not be the only schools that have that. Does that our is audience a know where? We're referring specifically to Baltimore and are familiar with this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just we are. Yeah, we clear that up. Okay. So, yes. Baltimore that, base. That all could have been avoided. <laughs> but it's no, it's bullshit that those only two schools have their own school buses. I feel as though every city school should have a designated MTA bus. They should. If a bus picked those students up and took them home, some of that stuff could have... And I said, it's not an absolute. I am not... I'm... I, to my understanding, I I'm a been out of school for a bit, but there used to be every school had their own um in private MTA when? buses. When? I, 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 I just came, I just came out of high school a couple years ago. We ain't had that. See, I always went to school in the county, so I wasn't even so aware. Like, so, like, I, you, you know, I'm, I'm a product of Southwestern. We used to have our, our school buses. Well, that's, that's how Emerson that's, used to have have their buses. That's how well, decades ago, man, you're old. <laughs> What? <laughs> it's a, only a decade ago. <laughs> Not decades. It was decades. But anyway, I just came out of high school a couple years ago. No, that's that's not the case anymore. It's not like that. Okay. Well, friends, I saw I yelled at you. Don't. I don't care. I know. Okay. Well, getting back to the to in in the wide view. So yeah, I mean, I guess the gist is people make bad decisions. For a plethora, for a, f a couple of factors. People yeah. don't read. I mean, as Quest said, yes, simply some people are stupid. That can't be avoided, and that will always be the case. But that's not all people. The other thing is that there's a bunch of different social and psychological factors that 
hinders okay. all hinders all of us at sometimes from making the best decisions and judgments. And the problem the problem with that is that there's others who can exploit that and that happens in politics and religion and so forth and in business. So right. I mean, as we stated on an early episode, at one point in time, Republicans actually wanted black people to vote. They were for that, and it was Democrats who were against it, going far as to hire KKK to assassinate prominent black leaders and Republican leaders are part of that movement. So I agree the political, the scope has changed, but for me, me personally, me personally, I don't look at, like I said, I don't look at parties. I'm registered as independent. And I'm ha- and I'm proud to say that because so I, don't, am I. I don't believe in parties. I believe in whoever has the best policy that's not only good for me but good for society. And I think that's a key portion that when we vote, we don't tend to look at. We only look at what's good for me, but instead, what you have to look, you share this space with everybody. And my thing is, as an independent, I'm. Hmm. I'll say my own view is is liberal, and I mean that. And so let, me pref- l- let me let me preface that. <laughs> you want a high five? No, I want high five. <laughs> I'm liberal in the classical sense, not in the new radical left sense. But that's a different topic. Anyway, the point of me saying this is that although I may be liberal and tend to vote Democrat as an independent, I'm glad that there are black people that are Republicans. For the simple fact, I don't think we should all be grouped in one voting block where that block is then taken. You know, not taken seriously because they can always be considered as being the ones that's going to vote for us. And Democrats do that too much. They they know more or less that black people are going to vote for them Minority because because general. they're going to scare, because they're Democrats. They're going to scare people. Yeah. They're going to scare those those black Democrats into thinking that all Republicans are evil and racist, and so that they always well, they, 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 they kind of I mean, lived up to that standard. Well, for I mean, a little yeah, bit, yeah, though. but no, actually, you can break down Republicans from not di- all. different geographical regions. Like Republicans did. In the north, a lot of them in the northeast, especially like in places like in the New York tri-state area, mm-hmm. um, are more fiscally conservative but socially liberal. I got you. No, or, or, or 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 you know, ten libertarian. Whereas the ones in the south and the far west tend to be the more, you know, religious conservatives and the races and the xenophobes and so forth. You can break it down by geographical region, the type of people you're dealing with, and, and yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um. I myself am a Democrat, I, but I'm, I'm every day. I think I'm le- leaning more and more to becoming um, independent. Um, to me, the Democrat is, is the Democratic Party is caught up in too much political correctness. In my in my opinion, it, you know everything has to be oh uh, you can't call him gay or he he might take offense to it or you can't call him black. He might not like it. That's what I meant by the radical left. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't agree with all the identity politics that's yeah. going on in, in what's called liberalism. So there's only two ways: either he's homosexual or he's gay. As far as I'm concerned. Huh. I mean, I have gay friends, so they they don't. Mind. I'm not saying this for all gay people, but talking to a gay friend, a few gay friends of mine, a couple family members, gay is fine, homosexual fine. When you go to fag, queer, it becomes a little like. But offensive. you but know, I agree with what you're saying. I mean, you some, know, it, some it, things, sometimes some things. No, the identity politics, I think, are what. The Bose's That's what I'm saying. Season. Yeah. My, I don't know what you Mike, like. To, Mike. Okay, Mike. My fault. <laughs> so, wait, I, I think what he's saying is that the identity, identity politics is is not just people saying, well, I want to be called this, I want to be called that. I think he's getting more into the fact that we... Focus you, you, on you look, you Like, on a lot of college campuses, there's so much going on with what you supposedly can say and can't say. Yeah. To me, that, to you, me, that just... Lose, that, to you me, lose that's, track that's, of the that's issue. Com- that's completely against what liberalism is about to be against one of the cornerstones of liberalism, which is free speech and freedom of thought and expression. When you're telling other people that they can't think a certain way, even if it's wrong, that's not that's not liberalism to me. No, that's, I agree. And that's 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 agree. that's what's going on in the American left now. And that's I feel as though if you want to be a Ku Klux Klan member, liberal. you should. You have you have that right to be. You have the right to be a Ku Klux Klan member. I'm all for freedom of speech. But the problem what I think people take with freedom of speech is they expect no consequences should come with that freedom of speech. Freedom of speech doesn't give you the right to assault anybody. Yeah, you can say, you can, honestly, you can be white and call a black dude a nigga. You but can. I, but I can't be held if that black dude get mad and punch you in the mouth. Nope. <laughs> See, and this, is where, and this is where intelligence comes into play. This is where stupid people come in. Because stupid people will say, well, I can say what I want. I have freedom of speech. Freedom of speech doesn't avoid you of consequences. Well, this is something we've talked about in, Trump. actually, in... Uh, in philosophy, like at our com- 
during the commencement speech, this guy was giving a speech about, and I'll make this really brief, he was talking about, uh, you know, recent philosophy graduates, you know, they were in, he used to teach way out in the boonies in like uh, Colorado or somewhere, and the guy was, you know, was talking, and it was like these good old boy rednecks, and, you know, they disagreed with, with, with the party that was at there at hand, and the guy thought, well, because he was well-versed in philosophy and the different fallacies of, you know, uh, reason and stuff like that, that he could correct this guy, and short story, in long story short, he got his ass whipped, and he was speaking with the professor about it, and the professor said, well, you know, from all that you learned in philosophy, you should also learn, you know, when to, you know, speak up and when not to. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's not enough just to know the forms of reasoning and the fallacies and all and how to evaluate good arguments, bad arguments, so forth. There's also mm -hmm. no good, good fuck up. reason also gives you the ability to know when and when not to reason with with irrational people. Yep. So sometimes you just gotta shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Simply put, sometimes you just gotta shut the fuck up. You know when to shut the fuck up sometimes. Trust me. Trying to reason with an idiot is a fool's errand. Yeah. That's why some opinions I keep to myself. If I say what I really felt about certain things all the time, I probably still have friends, maybe. It's probably you two. Hey, you ever notice this, too? It's usually the idiots who say I'm the smartest. I have noticed <laughs> that. I mean, we all, you can we, go we, back, you can go back to the Bible, and, and, and you've seen, and that's been a common refrain that is always the, the stupid people who think they're the most intelligent, whereas... Mm -hmm. It's the the smart, it's the, the smart people are the ones who are more full of doubts. Like people yeah. always, and I'm not tooting my own horn here, but people always say, "Oh, you're pretty smart." And honestly, I don't think so. If I'm smart, it's just that sometimes I know. Given the subject. I, yeah, given a, a subject, of course, that you know. Yeah. I, 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 where I know I know my limits. Where other people will go on and say anything within that subject, or others. Assuming they know just because they can articulate. Just because you can articulate like something that. doesn't mean that. I oftentimes, get, I, get, I know what about, about you're talking I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I like to tell people, like, they like to say, oh, well, you're a know it all. I'm like, no, I'm not a know it all. I know a little, but, but about a lot. <laughs> you know, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I know a little bit about a lot of things. I say, I know a little about a little. <laughs> I, I, I just deal with it every day at. Somewhere, I can't. I'm not gonna say where. It, I, I deal with it. There's new things I learn every day. Yeah, it burns, it burns my soul. Everyone, I, I think that's a goal. Anyway, if you you should be able to say I've learned one new thing every single day, and yeah. if you and if you can't say that, then you're not trying. Cause you can learn. You have a computer in your hand. And a, one form of learning is just learn is learning when you're wrong. Yes, that's true. I have been wrong about a lot of things. Like people always say, "Oh, you don't like to be wrong." That's why you always correct them people. No, I say, "No, show show me that I'm wrong." I will accept that because if you show mm -hmm. me that I'm wrong, that's one new thing I've learned. It's simply that the thing that that's I thought right. was right was was wrong. Oh. Mike, I'm on point out my flaws whenever they may arise. I point out everyone's flaws. Yeah, you're ugly. Your mother. <laughs> <laughs> I already told you. You're, you're adopted. She found you in the harbor. Mm. It just took you right out of mercy. We still haven't identified your, if you're human yet. I don't want to be human. Y'all stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say critical thinking will lose you friends and family members because and it, a lot of people yeah. don't like critical thinking. They don't like people pointing out when they're wrong. They mm. People were more... Ha and this happened to me just a few days ago and and uh, Mike and Quest can attest to that because I, I told them about this story before, the, before our conversation here. But yeah, a lot of people don't like you to point out when they're wrong um even if they asked you they'd rather you just nod your head and say yes even if you know blatantly they're wrong it's because you're black maybe but <laughs> and and i think just you know across class ethnicity whatever whatever people like people to be yes men oh, yeah and critical thinking is always going to is, is always going to be the party pooper you know what here's another thing too I've I noticed that people haven't learned. They don't know the difference in between you listening and agreeing. Mm -hmm. You know, when people talk, I'm listening to you. I'm listening to the things that come out your mouth. Now, does it mean that I'm going to agree with them? No. No. And just because I don't agree with them doesn't mean I'm not listening to you. 
I think that that's I think that's the issue with with a lot of people because they'll be like, oh, oh, well, you're not listening to me. No, I I heard exactly what you said. I just don't agree with the subject that you're saying. Oh yeah, and then a, and then now this does re, this re does relate to voting because all of this entails. See, when you listen to a politician talk, yeah, this is in general just yeah. people who don't just in general. But this is a critical thing in itself. Is a part should is a part of voting. Mm -hmm. Whereas, well, it should be, but in, in, in often a it's word. not in a perfect world. But yeah, getting to what Mike said, that's tr I mean that's true. And okay, I'm losing my train of thought. Refresh me, right? <laughs> Just because you're you're listening, to right? Okay, got you. Okay, like when he was saying, well, people listen. Another another part of that is the hope, the whole have an open mind, man. People misuse that so much. Having an open mind doesn't mean that you have to agree with that person. Having an open mind means you're open to the possibility that that person might have a good point. Yeah, but people use it as a way to to critique you when you don't agree with what they say. Well, you're not you you're having a closed mind. No, having an open mind means I'm just open to the possibility that you may have some good points willing, and, I, and that I might be wrong. I'm that doesn't mean that I'm going to agree. I'm willing to entertain your idea <laughs> doesn't mean that I before, I, before, necessarily that, before I dismiss it, you know? Right. Smart, I, I mean, and that's, I, that's what smart people do. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. That's what smart people do. And fact, <laughs> fact check me on this, but I believe Carl Sagan said this. I'm going to paraphrase it. You can have an open mind, but not so open that your brain falls out. Oh yeah, we're gonna fact check that. We're gonna fact check that. That one's going to put put up. Um, spell it. Carl Sagan. I was making sure I spelled the name Carl right. Everybody spells the name different. Just making sure. Well, like the way Grit Grimes said, Carl. C A R L. And Sagan, S A G A N. Yeah. He's the guy that was the famous. And give the name of the what's the quote one more time. Sagan. Have no, an, the quote. Have an open mind, but not so open that your brain falls out. Oh, this is just great. This is great radio, people. We just check facts all on the air. Right. <laughs> Carl Sagan, for people that don't know, was the uh, huge science popularizer back in the 80s. Um, mm -hmm. And he was also one of the big people for SETI. SETI was the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. It was a... There's a group that still goes on now, privately funded, to to search for signals out of space that are alien signals. Isn't right. Carl so Sagan the one that did uh, the cosmos. original? He the, did the, the original, original cosmos. cosmos. So you were right to paraphrase that exact quote, but you paraphrase it right. It is a key? It pays to keep an open mind, but not to open your brain. So you paraphrase. You paraphrase it right. So Thank we're you. good on that. Now, to why you vote against your better interests? As I said, it's just a matter of many psychological and social factors. And not just stupidity, even though I think stupidity always plays a role in, in voting and politics. And it, and it always will, more than likely. I think it's, it's many facts. Like you said, it's education. That's why stupidity, I'm... Stupidity. This, the, um, this, 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 this really is a stereotype that if you are in this demographic, you vote for this party. And I think that, that's been a major issue. And let me interject also. That's why, personally, I'm still for the electoral college vote. Because most people don't vote in their better interest. So I think it's good to have that electoral college uh, vote. And check. I and then the thing, and then not the thing agree is, with that. <laughs> but, but, but also, listen, a lot, of, a lot of people don't realize that they can apply to be an electoral college voter. I told you. Okay. Most people okay. think, most people get that confused with the with the delegates and super delegates all that sort of stuff like they think you have to be someone who's already in a position of power and or a, a politician to be an electoral college voter no you can be an electoral college voter you have to apply for it and you can be that see I told you it was true when a black guy who talks white tells you then you know it's true <laughs> <laughs> but no but that that is it I said in a joking manner, but it is kind of. I think it is an issue we do need to discuss one day about the talking black and talking white thing. I think it's stupid. Mm -hmm. That should be another subject. That's that is going to be another subject. Yeah. And be also subject. going into the electoral college vote thing, <laughs> another problem with voting is that most people only choose the presidential elections to vote. Oh that, my that, God, and yes. the funny and the, the ironic thing about that is most people only vote during presidential elections when that's because the electoral college vote gives you the most ineffectual vote that you can. That you can do. You need to be voting during your local and midterm elections as well. Those are the ones where your direct vote actually counts. Yes. Before you continue, I do like to point this out, guys. Please, please, the mer the meritorial debate for Baltimore City is happening at the Murphy Fine Arts Center at Morgan State on Thursday. 
and it's free to the Thursday public. Thursday to what? what? What day is that? This Thursday. This Thursday will be... Let me double check. Thursday. And we are talking Baltimore, so yeah, let me in, also, Baltimore, so, in Baltimore. So, 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 well, so let me also tell people that if you have a record, you can still vote. Yeah, I think I think people need to know that. Yeah, so there's a lot of people in Baltimore. That, there's a lot of people in Baltimore that do have criminal records. So third, so still vote. Thursday, March tenth, the Baltimore City Meritorial Debate is at Murphy Fine Arts Center, and it's open to the public. You can RSVP to get there early, so you have a seat. But it is open. I suggest we all go out there. This is one thing you guys need to vote on since everybody complained about Stephanie Rawlins and blah, 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 blah. This is your chance to hear what needs to be said and to ask your questions. If you don't go out and do anything about it, shame on you. All right. Oh, okay. Good fact. But let me jump back onto this electoral college thing because that just okay, set me off a little bit. What? <laughs> like, honestly. Okay, so let's go on to the history of electoral college votes. So going back again to the history, the, the beginning of American politics... It was put into play because the founding fathers at that time, and I think wisely so, thought that most most of the population wouldn't have an informed view to to make to make a you know a rational vote, mm -hmm. and that's still the case today. Like you have like you you have you have people like Quest brought up earlier during the session that are poor, poor and white, but they vote for these elitist Republicans that. To play to their to their races and religious sympathies against their better judgment. But the electoral college is actually a a, a thing brought over left over from slavery. Mm -hmm. It was a way. It, it was a way. It wasn't just put in because of the founding fathers felt as though they were too stupid. It was a way that the southern states could also maintain slavery at the time. Well, that no matter no matter what the pop because the popular vote was that slavery need to be ab ab abolished, and and no and, and that was their way of counteracting that. Well. <laughs> Too bad I got the electoral college that says, you know, this person is, is president. It was, a way, it, was a, it was a way of them maintaining the laws. I do believe that the, the American people need to be educated. And maybe there does need to be a safeguard just in case. Now, the, that electoral college vote provides that. Yeah, but at the same time, it also discounts so, so many. No, no, sorry. Okay, okay, let's look at how the electoral college vote sort of works. So the electoral college voter uh, will basically pledge to vote in the way that that the popular vote goes within that that district or whatever how that goes but they don't necessarily have to do so but more but more likely than not they go with the popular vote within that that area so they the electoral college voter go is basically there to to vote for the way that popular vote goes in that that area but they I mean, but they, the, so they can vote their conscience if they don't think that's the way at, to go. Okay, they, I can they, tell you right now. Mean. I can show you one example right now that once the electoral college came back to bite you in the ass. I, I know what you're gonna point out: Bush versus Gore. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> but I mean that. Exactly. Exactly. But you put, if we if we didn't have Bush versus Gore, more than likely. We probably would be dealing with a completely different situation with 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 the war in Iraq, a completely a, a completely different situation with this with with nine eleven and the way the politics are even ran now. But that's a complicated scenario. Even I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I, 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 I give you that. But then also, you got to look that the Supreme Court decided a lot of those votes weren't going to be counted. They could have went towards um, the electoral college vote and so forth. And that, but this. Remember, the Supreme Court got involved and said, no, these aren't going to be counted. Oh, I can't say no on this because I couldn't vote at this time. Yeah. Well, I could vote at that and time. Then, I couldn't. So and, I on, and on top of that, let's, like I said, Gore, I mean, okay, Gore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to get too, I, I'm not, I don't want to bash the guy. But, I mean, I, I heard him speak at, at my school at the time. Mm -hmm. And he sounded, I mean, I was for him. But I mean, a lot of his vote was also taken away by people who who were voting for Nader at the time as well. That took a lot of mm. the people who might have voted for Gore's way as well. So I, I mean, like I say, I think I think it was a complicated situation. That might have been a time where the electoral college. I have a I have an interesting an interesting the question the for butt. people to do. I know this show has gotten very political, but I I just had to ask this question. Looking at the numbers with Bernie Sanders and right. Hillary Clinton, and looking at Donald Trump and the other guys, because they don't matter on them. Two percent! <laughs> <laughs> all you know, 
And listen, and listen, for, <laughs> and listen for people who don't want to vote for either one of them, they are third party candidates like Jill yeah. Stein. Please, people, don't say because I you vote for Bernie. If he don't get it, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna vote for Hillary. Whatever the case may be, Trump will win. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if if he doesn't get it, I'm not voting for Hillary. I'm sorry. I, that's not you I'm better vote for somebody. Do not let. I can still vote. I'm just not. Like I said, I can vote for a third party candidate. Let me let me let me ask let me ask this question though. Go ahead. I'm sorry. How would you feel if Bernie went to, went to actually be that third party candidate? What if he did? Break off away from the uh, the crim the Democrats, and he just runs versus Donald Hillary. The thing with Bernie, what I've noticed is that the longer people uh, hear him, the better he sounds. That and also, I think the way the vote is also breaking down right now is that Hillary is going to win where there's a huge black population, and uh, Bernie's I winning. Pray not. Bernie is yeah. You, you're seeing this happen and. Like from Super Tuesday and and just well, recently, some, this well, like, some of those numbers they he's, say he's, some of those numbers have been skewed a little bit. But no, but but that's the but that's the biggest issue too is that I don't understand how do you vote? How do you not vote for the person who fought in civil in civil rights movements for you? Because the and, because the Clinton brand name is so, is so big in the black community. Look, I, I, it's hard, look, it's he, hard to he's decide. Hillary Clinton called called black people super, super predators. Look, <laughs> I know. no, I listen, know. listen, listen, listen. Amara has a point. In a black in a black household, Clinton is next to Jesus. Oh my God! And Obama because he's no. because he played a saxophone on a Arsenio Hall show and kissed black babies. Everyone thinks, oh, he's for us. And, and don't forget that um, Hillary had Sandra Bland's mom on there, which everybody, you know, tears for. I'm like, fuck her. No, look, look. I'm not gonna bash Hillary. I'm, I'm above that. I will. Well, he will. But I'm not. I bash probably will too. <laughs> and drag me down. I'm a All right, fine. Y'all still me to y'all level. Fuck this bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry. No shade on her, but I cannot get behind it. And if we as a people, no, no, just no. The fact, just because she had a few black women, this woman has on video on Facebook and YouTube threw out a black woman who was trying to voice her opinions and her concerns. Hillary basically told her to shut up and ha had her kicked out. At Donald Trump's, they assaulted a young black woman for at a did Donald Trump see, rally. Did you see the did, did you also did you see, see the one with the Somali woman? The 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 the, the Jewish and the and the and the, and the, and the Islamic woman wearing the stars of David and they were that were escorted from Trump's um camp. Did y'all see that one? There's, it's too many of them to keep track. But now when Bernie Jeez. now when the two women who helped start the Black Lives Matter movement came to a Bernie Sanders rally, he let them speak. He humbly stepped and let them speak. Now some people said, well, they're going against the interest. No, they weren't going to get he. They weren't going against the. They wanted their voice to be heard. And the fact that he let them voice their concerns. He had he didn't have too much power to step back and let them voice their concerns. Clearly shows somebody who who gives a damn. He cares about the people. He doesn't care about being president. He wants to be he, he cares about this nation and where it's going. It's not about votes. It's not about money. This man this is the one candidate that can't be bought. And I don't understand. Please don't tell me. How do you, are you the most liked, he's actually the most liked candidate out of everyone, but yet he's not getting any, any votes. It's something wrong with those well, numbers. Well, I told you the numbers television. were skewed. I told you the numbers were skewed. They were having this. But now, yeah. now somebody trying to, well, Bernie Sanders get a super pack from a bunch. Now, here's the thing. That super pack, quote unquote. It's a came, super pack? Quote unquote. Came from a regular, some nurses, a group of regular nurses who pulled their money together to donate. Now you're talking about a well, it's actually thousand. illegal for the for the candidate to to work with the super PACs. No, whether, whether they actually do or not, that's a different question. Excuse but me. by law, they aren't supposed to direct what's going. Well, on. Well, no, they the no he didn't direct. So, but he he's refused to to the have super PAC super PAC money. Right yeah. now, they now I'm again yeah, they called it the the opposing side. I think it was for Hillary or Trump, one of them too. Called it a quote unquote super PAC. But you're talking about. Money that a, a a group of nurses who work a regular everyday job like everybody else put their money together and gave it to a candidate. You're not talking about Goldman Sachs, a great financial institution. Actually, it was Killer Mike who brought this up on the View, and I think that the fact that a black woman went on Killer Mike like that, I felt I looked at it some way like, really though, you gonna really go against this man like that? And there's a difference between a, a pack and a super pack. 
I, a super PAC are when you have your multi-millionaires, billionaires. And this wasn't a super PAC. It was a PAC. I don't, you know what my thing is? Hillary, stop playing the woman card. Stop it. Stop it. I'm stop a, it. I'm sexist. Stop, stop it. it. No, I'm not. No, there. I'm not sexist, but if she you, you she said like, you were. She said if you don't vote for her, you're sexist. So by definition, I must be sexist. No, she didn't actually say that. Her her little henchwoman. Uh, it doesn't matter. She represents you, so therefore, it's no better than you saying it. But, but, but the whole point of it is, is I don't like the fact that she keeps trying to play. Let's get a woman in the in the, in the presidency. Okay. No, I'm like. Let's get somebody who's going to do a great job in the presidency. Well, there, there, there. I, it doesn't matter if you're a woman. We can it have, it we doesn't can matter if you're a man. It doesn't matter. Both. You can be a more for day. As long as you get shit done, I will vote for you. But Elizabeth Warren didn't want to run. Mm. Hashtag mm. Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah. And then, do do everyone know what a, uh, a PAC is? It means a political action committee. Okay. And that's no, what my question was saying is basically people pull their, their money together in the interest of a certain candidate and they can use that to to uh, make advertisements for and pro um, candidates and so forth um, but that's a huge difference between just any pack which a lot of people put together and super packs which are these huge uh, mm -hmm. corporate funded things by big people like Goldman Sachs yeah or like who or who are the two douchebags that like to do a lot of stuff on the Republican side? The uh, the brothers, I'm sorry, I can't remember their names right now. But so, anyway, they 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 funded so many things, both Democrats and Republicans. Some people think they only funded Republicans, but they funded both, and they have a lot of sway on on what these politicians then do because they're then beholden to these people who funded them. I, and that's so, that's and that's what Bernie was trying to get away from, cause uh, he cause he make cause he's he just pointing out what common sense is. People who give you money, then you have certain obligations to them. Right. Okay. All right. For running short on time, we really need to mm -hmm. kind of wrap this up a bit. Um, what is your guys' uh, method on at least getting people to, I guess, start voting? In, in better interest, like what is, what is, you like your my my idea. For for as people in general, mm -hmm. um, it's to educate, man. You have I feel as though in this society that is shunned to have intellectual conversations. By intellectual conversations, I mean things that matter, like politics, religion, your finances. Like most people want to discuss how much they make with their coworkers, which I think is absurd. Mm -hmm. You should. That makes you make sure you're not getting cheated out your money. But I think till we break that social standard that you're not supposed to talk about this in certain places. Like me and you went we went to a mall and we asked what ten people, ten adults, and like what, maybe three out of ten knew the three branches of government. Yep. That's sad. And here you are and mind you I couldn't vote at this time. No, I could vote at this time. Yeah, you could have voted. I, I could have voted. I voted. I, I was old enough. But prior to <laughs> even a couple years, I couldn't vote. So the fact that I had people who were making decisions who didn't know the three branches of government, but making decisions on my behalf, because I just because I wasn't old enough, even though I was smarter, but I just wasn't old enough, it's is it's scary. Yeah, and I, it's very scary. Yeah, it's it's scary. Like the citizenship test the immigrants are given, most Americans would fail. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I had a, um, an Asian guy tell me that most um, when people my, when people um, immigrants come here that they don't care for politics, like they just don't want to vote, and I think that is a major problem because they have shown, and I will have that fact for you guys, that you have many Asians and those and Latinos and Hispanics who check who when they fill out the ethnicity they put white, hmm. and they and they push it on through. And I think, and, and that's a major problem right there, because now you're screwing up the numbers. Now, most things we think should be a demographic or the statistics we do get out, even though they're already screwed, are inherently wrong just because of that alone. Just because that inherent thing of if I'm if I'm look white or I act quote unquote white, I fit into society. I, I just had to be a step above. Well, that gets you know? into a whole different subject. It's a different subject. Right, what about you, Amon? As far as helping people make better decisions for mm -hmm. voting or I, voting or anything i don't know i mean like i come from a psychology background so i'm a little bit more pessimistic about changing people's behavior and 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 influencing them on how to make better decisions mm -hmm. i think unless they already unless they already have the mindset that they're um 
have, have you ever heard of the big five personality traits? And one of them is openness to experience and stuff mm -hmm. like that. People who are low on that aren't going to get. Give us the big five real quick before you. Okay, so I don't, I don't know them off offhand. Like, get maybe, maybe you fact check me. Yes. It's called the big five, and that's that's the major personality theory and and um, social and personality psychology, where the um, big five per personality factors. Yeah, one of them is openness to experience. Mm -hmm. And usually that's one that conservatives are considered low on. Okay. Um, but the way I take it is that most people, when it comes to things like politics and religion, where it's easier, like I said earlier, to think through some lens of, of some ideology, will do so instead of critically thinking individually on, on you know, on individual case by case uh, matters. And I'm not. I'm not too positive that you can really change that on people, especially once they get to a certain age. And at least some, like I said, personality theories is, is known that by the age of 30, people aren't going to change their personality. So you're just stuck in your bad habits. So. Like, like I said, that may, hey. that may or may not be true, but I, it, I, it's, I, I, I'll, I'll say this about um, what I've no for me, because I'm I'm like 31. You're old. <laughs> Both of you are old. <laughs> I'm older than you. What, what I've noticed is that the stuff that I consider like the core of me, the, you know, the sense of, you know, right and wrong, um, me being open to listen to certain people, and me also not necessarily looking inside the box, but trying to be that guy that's, that's always have that different perspective out, out, outwards of it. Uh, it 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 stays pretty much that. I mean, other things kind of come in and influence me here and there. I actually would like to say, as I've gotten to my thirties, that I do listen a lot more. Mm -hmm. I like pre before thirty, I would probably just shut everything down. No, nope, you're wrong. Shut up. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is the reason why you're wrong, and I don't even care. I don't even care. You're wrong. I ain't got time to hear it. You know, but I've I've grown past that. Oh well, well so I'm, I'm getting back to, to well, me then I'll just say yeah. like when it comes to certain things like individually I'll try to talk with people about things mm -hmm. but not on a big scale like I don't try to influence people and in how they vote or if I'll okay. tell them they should vote but other than tell them how they should vote or you know lean in a certain way I, I don't really do it I mean I like I do individual stuff to promote like um, you know my own views or how politics should go. Like I, I sign petitions as they come along. Um, I vote. Uh, I once even tried to run for city council in in uh, College Park when I was in college. Unfortunately, I did it like right before the deadline, and there was a hurricane at the time, so I didn't get the necessary amount of signatures. But mm -hmm. short, long story short, I I've been politically active, so that's my own way of trying to no, at least you try to influence. People. Yeah, but I don't try to go out to groups of people and actually like speak or anything like that um i think my 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 thing to get people to make better decisions is take time to actually look at the decision i i don't i don't i'm not one for gut feelings because gut feelings are like 50 50 sometimes you know <laughs> well by definition it's sometimes <laughs> 50 /50. yeah 60 <laughs> percent of the time it works all the time <laughs> That can be a whole different subject. Why are people statistically <laughs> Um But you should take a look at everything and evaluate it. Don't be afraid to look at something. Don't be lazy. That's my that's my thing. Don't be lazy. You to have a computer in your hand. Yes. And I stand yes, by you, that always. Yeah, if you if that. you gotta you can if you can Google what Beyonce wore at the Grammys, then I'm pretty sure you can Google what is um Hillary's take on education or what is Donald Trump's newest rant. Or <laughs> you know, or, or or his invisible foreign policy that we don't know about. Don't try to just say anything. If you ask this man what two plus two is, well, you see here, we're gonna take this two. But before we get to this two, how about this? These messages are gonna. How go about this? Wall. Does this sound like a person you should vote for? You should go after people's families. He said that. Oh yeah, he said that on on Fox. Yo, anytime you can make Fox 
look at you like you went too far. You really went too far. And actually, I also say, actually, don't just Google stuff. Actually, read something. No, 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 Go- no. Go- Google. That's what I mean. Problem with googling and stuff is that you can pick out anything that fits your own personal biases. Read anyway. through it. So no, basically, basically you're just reinforcing your own well, pre-existing biases. Well, I mean, be, be re- be, read through not just one site, read through multiple and read through other sites that might not necessarily agree with your point. Yes, research. Re- yes. That's the word you're looking for. Research. Don't <laughs> just Google and click the first link. But look, we gotta go. We running up a lot of time. I think we might even be a little over. Are we a little we over? We might be. A little know. bit. A little bit. Okay. All right. You can catch the show on Facebook.com slash Axe Learn Question. Uh, you can go to YouTube, Axe Learn Question. Our email is Axe Learn Question. Twitter, again, is Axe Learn Question. We do that a whole lot on here. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, We'll catch you guys next time.